Happy Thirsty Thursday, everybody! Hello! Look who's back! I know, it feels like it's been more than a week. Does it? Well, I guess it has been, it's been two weeks. Yeah. A week for oh, you, two yeah. weeks for me. But it's just, I, I felt like I must, missed more than one week. Well, I felt like we haven't done it in forever, too. So we're both on the same yeah. page. But you know what? This time of year, we're ramping up. Quarter four happens. So we start ramping up, you start ramping up. There's, I'm filthy. A lot of a lot of uh, social media kind of things going on because yeah. you know quarter four is coming. Yeah, holidays so is our anniversary are coming. coming yeah. yeah. When is our anniversary, by the way? Well, like it's uh, usually falls um, the week of of Black Friday. I'd have to look up the exact day. Okay. So we always bounce it to the week before well, that because we're not going to pay you Black Friday. You know, because you go Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You know, that is just great planning. Like, we should have done a better job of opening, like, like in July. But I bet you guys were excited. You're like, oh, it's Black Friday. We're going to have, like, Cyber Monday. Well, it was basically, oh, we have the stuff and we have the ability to open, so we're going to. Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it just happened that way. So we always do our anniversary the weekend before. Black Friday. The weekend before like Black Friday. Like, we want to be first. Cool. Yeah. And we're getting in, um, I don't know if I, I think I was talking about this a bit on last week's live with Zach, but we're getting in new apparel. Um, we're getting And new glassware. I'm really excited oh, about the new glassware. Oh, that should be coming soon. Whenever it comes, so I think it, they said, like, mid-August. Okay. Um, whenever it comes, we should use it for the live, because that'd be cool. I think we should drink in all of it. I think all of it. <laughs> we'll, we'll fill all of them and just sit with you guys. Yeah, um, so today we're drinking Shiraz, um, also known, like, they're similar to Syrah. It's like the same mm -hmm. type of wine, but depending on different, like, what part of the world that it was made in or grown in, right? Right. And you told me that. It's all regional, back. right. And I actually remembered it. Look at that. Well, Ian, you wrote your, I have to say, shout out to this one here. Um, she did a newsletter. If you're not, if you don't get our newsletter, you need to get, you need to get a hold of, of us. Go on our you. website. Okay. Go on our website and sign up for our newsletter. Yeah, and um, you had a newsletter blast that has done amazingly well with a code in it, but also like this amazing picture of food. And you know how I feel about food. And Shout out to it. Todd as well for. Did he help out with that? With what he helped out, he helped out with making sure everything was where it needed to be. Oh, so. I like it, and and it's crazy because we're talking about Shiraz today, and we sold thirteen Shiraz kits this morning because. They're fifteen percent off. I feel like we need to have a like an air horn. Maybe in our in our new in our new in our new live. We've room. got plans, people. We've got plans. We're gonna need an expansion. Uh, we were just talking about how it's echoey in there. Maybe we need to get some sound editing material, and now we want to add more sound. The yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Pretty much sounds like us. Ta -da. <laughs> Just the hot mess, basically. <laughs> but no, uh, Shira's kits are fifteen percent off. So it's only the classic California is fifteen yes. percent off. Yes. Um, we do have other kits available, but um, this only this one specifically is fifteen percent off. Which normally I I didn't write down prices. I did. It's seventy nine ninety nine. <laughs> Normally it's seventy nine ninety. I'm just laughing because that's classic Courtney. Like you know, I was ready. <laughs> um, seventy nine ninety nine normally, which I mean, I think it brings it down to like sixty seven or something. I think it that's like, what it was. I sixty some, was. something. Yeah. I did write in the email. Look at me. <laughs> well, I have a calculator over there if we need to do it, but wow. Well, uh, you know. I think it's funny that like. I haven't seen an actual real life calculator in so long. Yeah, but you know what? My what are you hands. Doing? Well, because if I use the phone, you can't feel the buttons, and I do the calculator without looking because I'm always looking at something else. And you're yeah, and yeah. you can pro you probably have it down to where you. Can I, yeah, I don't have to look at. Yeah, there's it. No so why change? Why teach an old dog new tricks? Yeah, there's literally no way that I could do that. Yeah. I'd be like just. I mean, I can I can pull up the calculator on the computer and use my my keys as well. Yeah, but just the other day, Jed was like, "Man, you don't use your calculator often, do you?" Because he watched me get to it on my phone. Which, granted, everything on my phone there's like no rhyme or reason to the organization of my apps, which is very, like, ideally in my mind, I feel like there should be an organization structure. But then, like, actually putting in into practice, it just I'm like, no. Like, I know that my run app is three pages in, and, like, I tap that. And I know that, like, my Spotify is on the first page, and if it's not, where did it go? But um, my calculator, he's like, you don't use it a lot, do you? I was like, no, I use it all the time. Why? And he's like, it's on the swipe down menu. 
Like, and yeah, I, but you just know where it is. I, I never knew where it was, so I, like, I just, well, I knew so where it was. So you just look for it, so you go I search? Just, I search. I do C-A-L, mm-hmm. and then it's right there, and I tap but it. But now you know swipe But it. I almost always do C-A and tap the calendar app. I don't know, it's just something about that. Like, I see the calendar app, I'm like, yeah, that's a calculator. Has numbers. Clearly, I haven't seen a calculator enough, that's why. There we go. I, I can frame <laughs> one for you. <laughs> um, so 15% off, I don't think I ever mentioned the code. It's just Shiraz. S-H-I-R-A-Z. Ta-da, simple Easy. enough. Today we're drinking one that uh, is sweet, but the one that we have is dry. It's right here. This bad boy. But the cool thing about a dry kit of any kind is you can always sweeten it to taste. So your taste is definitely sweeter. Paula then, put me in charge of the wine. Today. I did. I, I, I have to tell you, like the owner and four other people are with him in the Bahamas on a trip. That's where they're at. I think they're in the that. Bahamas. They're at Atlantis cool. for the week. Not jealous. And no, we're we're fine. It's we're fine. Like it's, it's just storming like it's here. Consistently raining here. Or anything. Yeah, it's just storming. It's pretty. We'll just pretend we're in Seattle. I kept saying, it, "Oh, it's just because it's a spring," but like it's August. It's not here. spring. <laughs> First of all, we should be drinking. Yeah. So, yeah, they're in the Bahamas, and I've been a little bit crazy, so you were in charge, and I... It mm. smells good. I didn't even... I didn't, didn't even, even smell? You were ready. Um... I smell some tannins, some earthiness. Yeah. Oaking. It's, it's pretty sweet, though. It's actually really good. <laughs> oh, it is sweet. It's really sweet. It just got me. Yeah. When it said sweet, like, I wasn't expecting it to be that sweet. It's not like, it's not like bold. It's not like hurting my teeth sweet, though. No. Um, the description for this kit said Mm. peppery, let's see, it says spice, black cherry, and blackberry. I'm definitely getting, like, cherry blackberry. I don't know if this particular, I'm not getting any spice no, from it. but I have had this one, and, and I would have brought it in, except for we drank it. Oh. <laughs> we drank it all. Oopsie! I didn't sweeten it. Oh, Inappropriate Brewery is saying, if you leave this one for a year, it's out of this world. It, it is. Yeah. This is the type of wine that has to be left for a minute. Well, well it doesn't have to. I believe... But. Any of these, you're going to do a minimum of, like, six months. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's going to be so immature, and you're not going to get that amazing flavor. And you're exactly right. Um, if you're going to do a year, use a Noma cork. Put it in a nice, quiet, dark, well-regulated temperature area, and it's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. So don't let the price point scare you. Yeah, and it, well, it's not even really that expensive I'm for at the most part kids. Oh, you mean like okay? Yeah, don't think you're gonna get a piece, uh, a crappy wine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because it's it's um, it's actually good, really good. Yeah, we had we did a whole thirty bottles of it and they're gone. Um, but you know, I, I in my defense, I'm surprised okay. that he even has like cell service. Oh no, I've talked to all of them a hundred times. So. Yeah, he probably has. Yeah, been. and he can't remember that you know Thirsty Thursdays every Thursday at eleven. You're so. clearly not salty about yeah. it. No, but actually, I just talked to them and they were like totally in the bar already so yeah I had, I had to call my son Nick and I was like hey you gotta help me walk me through this thing. is the Bahamas where they got the you were talking about Rattlers or whatever is yes they drink those Rattlers all day yeah, so that's long. probably that's probably what they're mm-hmm. doing absolutely and they were down under the if you've gone there's this overpass and you go down under where the locals go and they were eating conch salad and drinking beers yesterday <sighs> yeah they call that work right but anyway, back to this. We did make all 30. We drank them all. But in my defense, we weren't doing lives the last time I made this kit. Right. So I didn't think about reserving. So yeah. from now on, we're going to have to reserve a few have to reserve. for our lives mm-hmm. specifically. Because it's not like we, I mean, we decide we want to do a month in advance, but you can't have this be we're good a month ready. in advance. Yeah. Unless we just brewed every single kit. It's a thought. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if we can make that happen. Mike's in the Bahamas. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> and we're grown-ups. So, there you That's go. That's funny because I was literally, I was You're like, sit. Sh- I was like, I got to get to it. I got to get to it. <laughs> I got you. We haven't we haven't said that in a no, minute. No, no. We well, apologize, we, but we, we are grown-ups. We do grown-ups. it because we're grown-ups. So, you get 
on the s <laughs> it just made me laugh the way you said it. He said, you get on the sauce every Thursday at 11 a.m. Yes. You're right. You're we, right. We do. That's why we come to work on Thursdays. We're never late on Thursdays. That's why I come to work in general. I'm like, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I just you gotta get to the Thursday. Thursday. And then Friday, I'm like, okay, it's one more day and I can look forward to next week's Thursday, Thursday. Right, because then you have beer sadness, remember. I know, I do <laughs> have beer sadness. We're gonna coin that term if you don't get the drink. Um, Todd has been something up about beer sadness. I think he put something up. So, um, one of the things that I've done, <laughs> one of the things that I've done here. Uh, is I started I was trying to get people to follow the company Instagram if you're if you're watching this and for whatever reason you're not following our Instagram account give us a follow we try to put like funny entertaining educational things up on there I say we it's really me if you don't follow the com company Instagram you're personally insulting me um, and it I'll is have, personal. She's picked a fight with everybody in the company. I'll have real sadness instead of beer sadness. That is um, real sadness. Are you talking about? But no, so I was trying to get people to follow it. And um, I put up a sign that said free beer with a little asterisk. In the bathroom. In the bathroom. She put it up in the bathroom. <laughs> I knew everyone would see it. Everybody you know? goes there. And um, the little asterisk, you know, down at the bottom, it said, I'm sorry, there's not actually free beer. I just wanted to say that you should follow the Instagram account. And, you know, ever since then, I think I made some enemies. <laughs> Long story short, I put up a sign in the bathroom every week, once a week. Recently, twice a week, because they've been requested. Fresh and they're material. they're hilarious. They're hilarious. If, if you come in and you shop in the store, you will see her signs in the restroom. Thank you. And to, this one is about her living in Hawaii. And no snakes. I, I, I read it. We, I we all read the signs in the restroom. It's so funny because uh, I either get a bunch of feedback or I get nothing. And I'm like, I don't know if the nothing's good. <laughs> well, what the one of them that I'm still laughing about, my mother's still laughing about, is we read oh, wait, the... Wait, wait, wait. Someone says, I missed you girls about two weeks ago. I got an orange creamsicle kit, a pumpkin spice porter, and a raspberry lime cider kit. Dang, Daniel, I think that is. You are brewing. Yes. Yes. We want to see pictures. Yes. So if of you, all of them. Of all of them. So if you um, tag us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, yeah, we'd love to see pictures. For and real. Fe and feature you, for sure. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. So uh, mom is still laughing about the fact that there was one of them that you wrote in, at the bottom and said, um, why are you reading the sign in the bathroom, you weirdo? <laughs> After we read the whole thing, we got insulted, and she is still laughing about I'm that. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. I do, yeah. I don't remember what the sign was. I don't either. I just I was called a weirdo. So. <laughs> and I I think I said like, uh, pull your pants up, we get back to work. You sign reading weirdo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's delightful. We like to keep things fun here. Um, Oh my goodness, Daniel also has a kid on the way. Oh, he, congratulations! He's brewing a child, he said. I love it, you're brewing all the things. Uh, due in September, oh my gosh. That's September. right around the That's corner. That's really close. Oh. Well, congrats on that. That's We exciting. love babies. Yes, I love babies. <laughs> I'm a baby puppy kind of girl. Oh gosh, a, a dog, just bring it in and pop oh. it. Oh, all train of dogs. I, I know, I, I'm, it's, it's, it's bad. We have two dogs here, and... um. There, so technically Stella is Nick's, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, Edward is Zach and Asia's. Yes. And uh, Edward, it's a girl. She Edward Beatrice. It's so cute. She's so cute. Mm -hmm. She's a little black miniature schnauzer, right? Is what yeah, she's the savage. Mm -hmm. She literally will decide from minute to minute whether you're friends or not. With everyone, but she particularly likes both of us, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, dogs know how to choose good people. That's the darn truth, and I have snacks. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I have booze with you and snacks for her. But, yeah. So, on to the, if you if you are also like Courtney, though, and you like a sweeter wine, mm -hmm. if you bought something called wine conditioner. Oh, is uh, that what that's for? Yes. Cool. So, um, at, you, you follow the directions just like you would because this one is um the body is a four out of five as far as full bodied the oaking is a two out of three and um this is going to finish dry just completely dry but if, if you want it to be a little sweeter and a lot of people do 
buy one of the um, wine conditioners and it's like, uh, it looks like a little pouch mm -hmm. and it's got a little screw top on it and when you squeeze it out the the stuff inside the conditioner looks a lot like corn syrup like it's that kind of consistency it will sweeten your wine just before bottling without having the worries of like re putting re sugar in and, and refiring if you had one stray yeast and you refired and you ended up popping all your your caps and creating co2 it'd be heartbreaking no wine conditioner it says it in the name but can that be used to back sweeten like meads and beers as well you can or use it to it... back sweeten anything okay mm -hmm. cool because it's made to sweeten it without giving it any off flavors mm -hmm. and it will not restart your fermentation hmm. it's that's cool amazing and it's not expensive so you don't have to use the whole packet if you just want it to be off dry you put in less than if you want it to be sweet Oh my gosh, Daniel's on a roll today with good news. All right, what else? He little said, girl? Did I just read little, little girl? girl? And he said that his buddy has two corgis. Um, see, we love puppies. Dude, my friend loves corgis, and she's like, I just like the way their little butts look. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, you mentioned Noma quirks earlier. Yes. Um, do those come in only one size? Yes. Okay, because I was hoping a customer the other day, like yesterday, and he was like, are these all the same size? And I said, well, they're all in the same basket, so these all should be the same size. And then I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, I think we only carry one. We do. One so, size. so how does that work? All right, so there's a lot of mis misinformation out there about corks, and I'm glad you brought this up. Mm -hmm. So basically, people will say to me, I'm going to use this bottle. What cork do I need? Bottles are standard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the bottle it doesn't matter at all. It's your corker yep. that matters. So if you're using a hand corker, you're going to have to use a number eight cork. You can't use a normal cork. It's all about the amount of pressure. The pressure, the torque, how you're going to get it in there. So if you're using a hand corker, you can use an eight by one and three quarter cork, or eight. if you can find an eight by one and a half, you're fine. But that's all you're going to be able to use mm -hmm. to comfortably... Cork your bottle. Like maybe if you're Jed or something. If you're like big muscles. My husband always, my husband Jed always, I swear, he'll screw a top on something and he does it casually and then I'm over there like, Ugh, trying yeah. to get it off. I'm like, screw it on a little bit looser. He's like, I am. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. I was like, you're not. <laughs> yeah. So, but if you want to, if you want to have a really great cork with a lot less concern for oxygen getting into your wine, you need to have a floor corker. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and I've talked about what this about before. The, the, so you the eight and three quarters, um, is for a hand corker. Okay. So that includes a double level. Yes. Double, oh, double God. lever corker. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, but I would do the Portuguese floor corker. I think it's like 70 bucks Yep. and it's adjustable whether you're using a 187 bottle or a 750 bottle or 1.5 liter bottle and it will accommodate a number nine which is also what a normal cork is. Mm -hmm. So you have to really have that to use the normal. Like, I think, is that a normal? Yeah, that's a Noma on the Maglioli right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is a, a Noma. I don't even have to put it on the side because it's not a natural cork. Yeah. You know, it's not a it's natural. Synthetic, it's right? a synthetic cork. You don't have to put it on the side. And um, I have no worries about that. So it's been in here. It's, it's fine. So my other question is we sell a champagne corker or we something do. like that that's for so, champagne bottles so is that that's different that's different okay because the champ the champagne um corks are completely different too oh okay we'll have to pop the top on one of those one day then yeah so you mm -hmm. can't do a champagne bottle with the portuguese no. Corker, corker no no so that's different yeah but champagne is also like we don't sell kits to make champagne no you have to Adapt a kit Adapt. to make it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah. Look at us getting technical. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I think these Do are... Do you like, like champagne? Um, I don't know. <laughs> they... Oh, we're going to fix that! <laughs> okay. You already know what I'm going to say. You're just like, I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever had it. I... So, okay. So, every year... I think you'll think this is really cute. Mm -hmm. Every year for New Year's, my family gets, like, the fake... 
um, apple cider. I mean, the sparkling stuff. cider. Yeah, the mm-hmm. sparkling cider. Mm-hmm. And we all pour it and we all toast to the new year, right? Um, this is when I was little. And then one year, so my mom used to have us make, um, I'm pretty sure she did this in a tactic of like, I just, I'm trying to keep the kids busy, right? She'd give us those hole punchers, like the one, mm-hmm. hole, and she'd give us colored paper. And we'd hole punch them all out and we'd make confetti. And for outside? Um, for inside. Oh, your mom. Wait, wait for it, wait for it. Okay. So with the hole puncher, it was good, right? No issues. We literally could not make in a day enough confetti to, like, really cause that much of an issue. And our hands would be like, cr- this is what we You're did like, as oh. kids, right? And, there, and there's five of us. So, you know, we all be trying and we get the coolest colored paper and whatever. And that's something about, like, a big family. You yeah. guys always have activities. And that was, like, fun and cute, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Well, then my dad got a paper shredder. <laughs> and me, being the oldest... And, you know, I have a little bit of creativity swimming around in me. Mm -hmm. It cut them in, like, diamonds. It it was, like, these strips of diamonds, so all you had to do is, like, kind of floof it around, and it would basically be confetti. And I was like, listen, guys, major upgrade. And we would start, let's see, New Year's, we would start, like, the day after Christmas, like, after we play with all our toys and everything, (sighs) and we would make garbage bags of confetti and then we (laughs) would throw it all over and the first year that we did it it was like 2012 2014 I don't know we shaped it into like the 20 the year and we all took a picture on your floor yeah and then we all Mm -hmm. took a picture around it okay so then we're like even your mom just the kids okay because she was crying in the bathroom so we all need to do we all did that and we're like we need to do it every year we only did it maybe like five or six years but it was the best and the whole but the whole family including my mom and my dad would grab handful and we all would just like have a fight before it happened with this confetti it was the most ridiculous thing and it sounds so normalized in my brain like that's just a thing that we did. Mm-hmm. But then, like, when I tell the story to other people, we I get reactions like that. Because I'm thinking, I would be still vacuuming so, that in, yeah. I don't know, at Easter. So the rule is, is, like, after after we do it, we all have to, like, pitch in and put it as much as you can back in the garbage sacks. And then we have to vacuum. Mom isn't going to vacuum. We have to vacuum, but kids vacuuming, I mean... That's... that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we trail yeah. it. We had this these stairs, you know, that we do it downstairs in our rec room, and we... Tra- there'd just be, like, a trail up the stairs. And your mom doesn't drink. And for... No. <laughs> <laughs> Help me, guys! And for, like, two or three months after, yeah, you just, like, randomly would find a piece of uh, confetti mm-hmm. in your clothes or, like, mm-hmm. in the, ca- the couch... You had to get in between the cushion. Uh, Okay. Somebody says, how are plugs for carboy... Okay, wait, wait, wait. I think we skipped a comment. Um, let's see. How are plugs for carboys and corks measured for their sizes? I have two carboys and one of the cork stoppers seem a little loose. Like the plug for a carboy? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, the, the plugs for the carboys, you can either use a number 10 and... I, I think I think we have small, medium, and large. Well, those are the bungs. Oh, those are so bungs. a bung would be a drill. A, the drilled bungs actually may work better because they're more forgiving. Because they the seat for them is much much taller, which means that as they go out, you you have a lot more forgiveness in the dimension mm-hmm. than if you did a stopper. A stopper. I mean, they're only like this, so that's all the forgiveness you have as they angle. Right. Okay? A number 10 is a traditional one. I'm going to guess it's... Hmm. Where's my little... Hold that thought. (laughs) I think my little measurer is over here. Someone said... Tim says, hello from Vermilion. Hey, Tim, what's up? Thanks for watching. We have a few people on today. So 10 doesn't really make any sense because it looks like it's not inches, it's not millimeters. Because I know um, in the U.S., I know this is not shocking to everybody, but in the U.S. we call them number eight corks. I I don't even know where that came from because I don't know where the eight makes any (laughs) sense whatsoever. But I can tell you that 
when we import them from Portugal, which is where most corks, like natural corks are made, they just tell us they're a this by this millimeter. Huh. Yeah. And so we do like so rest of the world speak to U.S. speak yeah. to make them work. Listen, I want to apologize if anyone's watching from another country. I'm sorry. Like, we messed it all up. So, I can't even tell you. What I can tell you is if you're looking for a very specific rubber stopper, if you call into the store and you tell them, I need a rubber stopper that's going to handle the dimensions of this particular opening, and you give us the dimensions, yeah, he we'll said figure it out. He's saying it's loose to the point that if I push it too far, it's going to go into the car. And nobody wants pressure. that. Yeah, yeah, Nobody yeah. wants that. But if you give us from your inside diameter to your inside, just go right across, inside to inside. Yeah, or stop in. If I you're mean, near us, in, yeah. absolutely. If you're, if you're near us, if you're near I don't us. Know if Otherwise, um, you know, you, if you call in, you'll either get Katie, Asia, or Todd, and um, they may have to call you back depending on what's going on because they'll have to come out and measure some stuff with my little fancy measure. But we can, oh, I measure all the time. I was just making fun of her. Um, she has like a calculator. Sorry, let me get, let me set my wine down here for this. She has a calculator that's literally like this bit on her desk. I was making fun of her until she said, well, yeah, but I can do it with no hands. I can do it with no hands. Oh, I can do it with no eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, go. yeah, no hands. I need, hand. I need a hand. Like, I need a hand. I can do it with no with your nose. <laughs> So, yeah. Sometimes if uh, Jed opens his phone and like he doesn't have like he has gloves on his hands in the winter, he'll like do it with his nose. I'm like, get out of here! What are nah, you doing? Nah, take your gloves off. Can't handle that. <laughs> yeah. I need to get him a pair of those uh, like touch gloves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably solve the problem, but it's kind of funny yeah. to watch. Let, let him use his nose. It's kind of fun. Um. So this wine pairs with some of the my favorite foods to eat, okay. which is like grilled things like hamburgers. It did say that. Yeah. Hot dogs, steaks, stuff like that, um, vegetables. So what if you made like a kebab type of a deal? Mm -hmm. oh, that'd be so good. We did that for 4th of July and they were delicious. See, now, every time I do a kebab, I, or, I'm, you're, I, you have to think of your kebabs. My kebabs are always mushrooms, onions, chicken, and shrimp. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit lighter. And see, that's... So we did... Um, well, I guess we did pork, so that's still not quite dark enough either. Although, I think this would be amazing with we did, ribs. What if you did a good barbecue rib? Yeah. And like I, like to, chicken, I like to slow Barbecue cook chicken, them. even. Because if you put the barbecue on it, it probably... Then it does add, out. like, the next level of flavor. And they also said, like, cheeses and pasta, which I'm there. How can you go wrong? Yeah. Yeah, like a red sauce. You'd want a, you'd want a hearty red sauce. <laughs> Daniel says, I'm an hour away. Road trip again. There you go. There you go. But yeah, I mean, it's just, the trouble is, I think, you know, a, the standard Italian carboy fits our our small bong and fits number 10. But if you have a, a, a carboy that's older, maybe it didn't come from Italy. Is that where we get our carboys from? We do. We Italy? import them directly from Italy. Okay, because yeah. I had um I had a channel that was talking to us. They... They've had, a, like, two of their carboys now. The bottoms had busted out. They're probably not from Italy. And they were saying that, yeah, so they were saying, they asked if we'd been having those issues because they were doing kind of like a, basically an investigative uh, video. Okay. Trying to get that information out to people, like, if you want good carboys that don't bust out. Well, ours come from Vetri, V-E-T-R-I, and they make as far as I'm concerned, the very best mm -hmm. carboys. And um, they only produce once a year. Maybe it's twice a year. And it's I asked not Katie, often. I asked Katie, we haven't, we've had the occasional issue with it from maybe shipping or whatever, but. If, if one of our shippers happens to kick it down a driveway, it's right. probably not going to survive. But overall, she said that it's been very good. Yes. Yeah. But that's because when you look at an Italian carboy, it's a clear glass. It's not full of bubbles. So like other manufacturers who make carboys, you can actually see the bubbles in the glass which are potential fractures, mm -hmm. okay? They're not fractured, they're fine, but they're places where you're gonna have a weakness and you have a potential. Right. Okay, and then also the, I mean, the bottom of those sits like perfectly where some of the others will be a little bit wonky mm -hmm. and you'll see it list to one side or the other. 
and and Vetri does not. Yeah. They they don't. You don't play. want that with glass either. Right. And it's like I feel like a cardboard is a very important. I mean, all your home brewing material is very important, but a cardboard is like the staple. You know, it's yeah. what's holding your. And if product. something goes bad in a cardboard, the whole thing is bad. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to clean and sanitize. And we have some sales coming up. Um, well, geez, uh, if you're looking to get any cleaners and sanitizers, um, and you need them in the immediate future, like, wait a bit, because we're going to have some really good sales on that type of stuff. Well, and, and so. if you haven't looked at the new PBW, yeah. you need to do that, because it's liquid. it's liquid. And I can't tell you how excited I am with that, because I can you know, how many times do you make a PBW solution and no matter how hard you stirred it up or you had your, your, your water warm enough, it was a little gritty on the bottom. So you felt like, mm, maybe I didn't get all the cleaner. Right. It's liquid! No, no, I know. I was just doing that literally the other day. Or you're, you're like swooshing it around inside the carboy and you're, you're doing this. You know, you have your hand over the opening and you're, you're doing the carboy swish. The carboy swish. Mm -hmm. We need to make a TikTok dance. Oh, carboy God, the carboy swish. swish. Which I'd much prefer if everybody was using the carboy cleaner, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> um, but when you dump it out and there's these like crystals that haven't completely yeah. dissolved. Yeah, and then you try to put more water in there to like rinse it out again and it does the same exact thing. You're like, well, Although this not is not a big issue now. if you're using the carboy cleaner because it would totally dissolve it. <laughs> the bar the carboy cleaner is actually really cool. I'll plug it for you. Pal. I'm plugging I'll it. Plug I'm plugging it. it. So. The carboy cleaner, if you haven't heard of the carboy cleaner, okay. Little Courtney coming in, Mike hands me the carboy cleaner, says, hey, make a video about this. And I'm like, okay, I don't know anything. This is like last year. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you attach this thing. It's a it's a rod. I should have brought one in. Um, it's, I have a stainless steel rod behind really? us. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I'll get it. It's a stainless steel rod, and then it has two... Um, like fabric pads on the bottom and you attach it to a drill and it just rotates around yeah you have one right there hmm. so so this is the bone that goes on the top then you got the stainless steel rod then you have these two fabric pads they so kind of our friends on facebook oh yeah i i thought i was more in the center but here you go facebook there's that for me here i know uh, and then you can kind of see, when you attach it to the drill, it just like rotates around and uh, cleans your carboy. And, and the centrifugal the... force, it comes out. And the top. It gets the top. Mm -hmm. You know how you get that crustiness on the top and you're like trying to bend your, your brush and get it in there? Not the case. I am drinking this. I'm uh, like... So, uh, brisket. It was recommended with this. Brisket's a great idea, but I love brisket. Dude, brisket's good wine or no wine, but True preferably I eat it with wine. my hands, whatever. Yeah. Brisket's so good. Mm -hmm. The wedding that we went to um, with the mead, where yes. they had the different types of mead, they had brisket, and it was... They didn't just, like, have brisket. They had brisket. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. Well, Montana, it's, like, to make good meat is, like... A staple thing there like they take a lot of pride in like making good meat they would hate me wouldn't they why we would buy like little fish and and, <laughs> and vegetables <laughs> they would go you go back where you came from they'd be like a, a vegetable sorry <laughs> what's what? wrong with her yeah no i mean they montana montana i'm not making fun of you but i'm making fun of you <laughs> that's because you are from there in addition to other places. But. Yeah. No, it's so funny because people are like, like even Todd, he'll make fun of me and be like, oh, you're from Montana. I like assume this, this, and this about you. And I'm like, I also lived in Southern California, buddy. Go that way. <laughs> Go that way. <laughs> so the best brisket I ever had was in an abandoned gas station in oh, Texas. Oh, too fast. Really? Yeah. Like we drove up and it had been a gas station, but then it was a restaurant. Which Solid. made sense to me. And there were like cows walking around out the back. And we went in and there was like... There's probably the cows that they used. To. I'm going to guess. They were watching their <laughs> friends. And um, like the smell hit you from the parking lot. And you walked in this line and there were like troughs full of ice and drinks, including beer. And so we did that. And then you go up and they just like put the mac and cheese on. And you know, the, the brisket and the I've green beans. I've never been to the south, so... 
that's, oh! a, that's the one area of the U.S. I've been all over the U.S., but that's the one area I haven't been we to. We were just out of San Antonio when we had that. That's so cool. It was very, like, like I didn't even need to chew. It was just You're, like, yeah, mm, done right. Yeah. The best, I think the best brisket I've ever had, which I'm sure doesn't even compare, is um, this place in Pennsylvania. It's in Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay. It's called the Three Bees Saloon. And it's like, it's kind of like the same thing. Like, you look at it, and you're like, this is sketch. Yeah, but you know some of the best places are not the yeah. prettiest. And you walked in, and the cool thing about it, too, is not only was their brisket, all their food delicious, um, they had, for every beer that you got, they gave you a strip of candied bacon with it. And I never... I, bacon until, with your beer? Yeah. Like, you got a reward for drinking yeah. beer? And up until that point, I had never had candied bacon, and I was like, this is God sent. Like... Tom always takes my candied bacon. Really? I'm not a bacon girl. Aw. Uh, well, you're missing out. I'll take mm, it all. He, gets, he also gets all the pickles that get on my plate. Ish. That, that's so weird. She has compared me to her husband Tom so many times. And you're like, like, yeah. I'm like, maybe I need to invite him on the live. And we He'd were, be more fun, right? Not saying that you're not fun. You're definitely <laughs> fun. But, yeah, I think that we would have the same preferences on, like, literally everything. Mm-hmm. Pickles are poison. We don't do that. Oh, uh, pickles do are so good. Uh, are, are you team pickle? Anyone that's watching, are you team pickle? And are you team bacon? I think Tom's actually watching too. Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom already doing. knows what team he's at. <laughs> so I want to try Aaron Franklin brisket down in Texas. Yes. I don't know. I don't even know the name of the place, but I'm going to tell you. I ate a lot of brisket when I was... I felt like it was my job <laughs> to, to make sure... That you they, tested. Were, they were doing a good job. You're like, is the sauce actually good at barbecue? I'm going to make sure. I will sure. let you know. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, with that. Um, we should give the code again. Yeah. No, that's what I was going to okay. do. Don't you worry. Oh, I, I, might, okay. I might not have the price, but I can do the code. Okay. Um, so, code Shiraz. S-H- oh, we've got a team pickle. Oh, Tom Collier. <laughs> you traitor. <laughs> team pickle. <laughs> So there's a, it's con- <laughs> um boozy scientist says yes and yes to pickles and bacon. See, so you're outnumbered. I here. always expect to be outnumbered, but that just means I'm original. It's okay. Original, aka wrong. <laughs> I've been wrong before. <laughs> um, code sure is S H R I A Z for fifteen percent off the classic California Shiraz wine kit. And judging on this, it's very good. It's very good. Even sweetened. It's very good. So, um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. What do we have going on next week? You're the week? boss of me. Uh, We're going into August. Into August. It yeah. is. It's August. I think it's actually um, my youngest son's 22nd birthday on that Thursday. Really? Because I'm old, yeah. Well, I know we have Oktoberfest kits coming up. Um, cause you gotta, in order to do Oktoberfest, you gotta kind of... You gotta make it. Yeah. And the Zombie Fest is, the, the release is out too. I just ordered a few zombie more of those. Zombie Fest. Oktoberfest, then, Zombie Fest. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then we're rolling right along. Is it just, is it just me or like, what the heck, the year I'm like, where's the, why's the fall coming in? Right. We just started this year. <laughs> we crazy. lost a whole year. Okay. Uh, alright, well, you guys have a good rest of your day and, uh, we'll see you next week. See ya.